Well, hey guys, buckle up because in today's video, we are going to be doing a deep dive comparing tretinoin to isotretinoin for anti-aging. I have seen your comments over the years. Hey, you do a lot of videos on tretinoin for anti-aging, but what about topical isotretinoin? How does it stack up to tretinoin for anti-aging? Does it even work? If you aren't familiar, tretinoin and isotretinoin, these are medications. They belong to a class of medications known as retinoids. And we use them in dermatology to treat a wide Wide array of skin conditions and skin concerns like acne, melasma, and improving the signs of skin aging. Topical tretinoin is considered the gold standard topical retinoid for improving the signs of skin aging. Why is that? Well, it's been around a very, very long time and it has the most research to support its use for improving the signs of skin aging, like wrinkles, fine lines, dispigmentation, and coarse texture. But there are a lot of other retinoids out there besides tretinoin. Recently, I did a video comparing endapoline to tretinoin for anti-aging, and I have another video comparing tazeratine to tretinoin for anti-aging. So if those videos sound of interest to you, head on down to the description box after this video and click on one of them to watch. But getting back to isotretinoin. Now, I know what you're thinking, isotretinoin, isn't that Accutane? Yes, uh, isotretinoin in a pill form uh, taken by mouth is a treatment for acne. Most people refer to it as Accutane. Isotretinoin uh, is a great drug for treating acne. It can cure acne for many people. Uh, however, you know, it's a pill that you take by mouth and there's a good chance you're aware of this already, but the medication, it actually has some potential side effects that can occur and so you need to be monitored for those. Now, one of the great things about dermatology is that our treatments, we have a wide array of options that can actually just be applied to the skin. And this is great because first of all, you're applying it exactly where it needs to go, right there to the site where, where it needs to be. And second of all, when you're applying a medication to the skin, the risks of side effects to your total body are substantially lower in comparison to if you were to take it by mouth. While isotretinoin is a pill taken by mouth for the treatment of acne, it also can be made into a cream or a gel that is applied to the skin. Now, honestly, in the US, we don't generally use topical isotretinoin. At least I don't, I have never prescribed it before. It's not readily available here. I don't have experience prescribing it and seeing its outcomes clinically. So I actually had to do quite a deep dive into the literature to see what exactly is out there on topical isotretinoin for anti-aging. What is the difference between isotretinoin and tretinoin? Uh, tretinoin is also referred to as all trans retinoic acid. Isotretinoin is the cis isomer of tretinoin. What the heck does that mean? Isomer is just a fancy chemistry name for one of two compounds with the exact same chemical formula, but they differ in how the atoms are arranged. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, tretinoin is the gold standard topical retinoid for improving the signs of skin aging for anti-aging. We have the most research, but what research, if any, do we have on topical isotretinoin? A 36-week multi-center double-blind placebo-controlled study of 800 patients showed that topically applied isotretinoin 0.1% showed a statistically significant improvement in the signs of skin aging in comparison to vehicle. Now, as a reminder, vehicle is a terminology for all the other stuff in a topical. You know, you don't just put straight up isotretinoin on your skin or straight up tretinoin. It's in something. It's in a vehicle, whether it be a cream or a gel. And so when you're doing studies to see how a given topical performs, you have to, in most cases, compare it to the vehicle without the drug. Because sometimes the vehicle alone can lead to improvements in, in the outcomes that you're measuring. In this study, they had the participants apply either isotretinoin or the vehicle to not only the face, but also to the forearms and the backs of the hands. Participants applying topical isotretinoin showed a statistically significant improvement in both fine and coarse wrinkles, as well as dispigmentation as early as 12 weeks. These treatment responses continue to improve throughout the 36 week duration of the study. One thing I really like about the study is they also take skin biopsies, both at the start of the study at baseline, as well as at the 36 week time point to look for changes at the histologic level. And they actually showed a improvement in epidermal thickness 
that was unique to the isotretinoin group in comparison to the vehicle control group, demonstrating a biologic outcome. You know, it's not just a, oh, this is smoothing things out and making everything clinically look better. There's actually some changes at the microscopic level going on. Now, generally when we think about the benefits of applying a topical retinoid for anti-aging, a lot of what we're motivated towards is improving the quality and quantity of collagen in the skin in the deeper layers. In this study, they actually showed no difference in the deeper layers of the skin uh, with the isotretinoin group compared to the vehicle control group, but it's possible that they have not carried out the study long enough to see those changes. At the beginning of the video, I pointed out one of the reasons I love topicals so much is that they decrease the risk of systemic side effects to the patient. They for the most part, should just stay localized in the skin and not be absorbed into your body to an appreciable level. This study monitored the levels of both isotretinoin as well as its metabolites in the plasma of the participants and showed that there was no appreciable detection of either of these compounds. And that's reassuring. You know, you can put it on the skin, it's going to have biologic effect, it's going to have a clinically meaningful effect, and it's not going to be absorbed into the body to any appreciable extent. So it's likely very very, very safe and without risks of harm to your total body. If you've ever used tretinoin, however, you know that while maybe it doesn't have the risks of harm to your total body, because again, it's not absorbed appreciably, it can be pretty irritating. Isotretinoin also appears to be likewise irritating for some people in these studies. And similar to tretinoin, the irritation for some people is not tolerable, but for others, if they're able to stick with it, the irritation subsides after about one month of use. In this study and some other studies that I'll mention, they're also able to manage the irritation by either decreasing the frequency from daily use to maybe every other day or adding in more emollients. Another study looked for six months at uh, isotretinoin 0.05% cream plus SPF. So the SPF was actually in the cream. They compared this to a vehicle cream with SPF. And in addition to the SPF in the uh, treatment group and the vehicle, they also had the participants use SPF. I really liked this study because not only did they, like the prior study we mentioned, show a statistically significant improvement in wrinkles, but they actually stopped the treatment and reevaluated the patients three months later. The improvement in the number of wrinkles was maintained three months after discontinuing the isotretinoin. Now, this study didn't show any differences in the appearance of solar lenticos aka sunspots, those did not appear to be affected by the use of topical isotretinoin. Maybe they didn't look long enough to get an appreciable change in those. But as you guys know, topical tretinoin can help in lightening sunspots. They didn't really see that in this particular study. Similar to the other study, there were no serious side effects. Adverse effects of local skin irritation likewise occurred in this study. Actually, 13% of people developed irritation to a point where they actually had to withdraw from the study. But again, other people in the study that had that local skin irritation, they were kind of able to, to plug and chug along, use maybe some more moisturizer or go to every other day use, and they were able to tolerate it. And in those cases, the irritation subsequently subsided within about a month of consistent use. In 1992, a double-blind, randomized vehicle control parallel group multi-center study in the US, 17 different US cities of 776 patients with mild to moderate sun damage. This one was interesting. They had them do isotretinoin 0.05% cream for 12 weeks, and then they bumped them up to isotretinoin 0.1% cream for another 24 weeks. They compared this group to a vehicle control group who just applied vehicle to the face daily for 36 weeks. SPF 15 was required for everyone. This study showed a statistically significant improvement in wrinkles, skin texture, sallowness with the topical isotretinoin 
versus the vehicle control. 5% of the patients in the study experienced local skin reactions like irritation. Five of the patients in the isotretinoin group ended up stopping because of this. And one patient in the vehicle group also stopped because of local skin irritation. So, you know, as a reminder, your skin can be irritated by anything. And it's important to see that there were some people getting irritation in the vehicle control group too. So some people are just very sensitive to certain ingredients, who knows? So as you can see, the studies that we do have on topical isotretinoin for photo damage do in fact show a statistically significant improvement in the signs of skin aging, including fine lines and wrinkles. It's clear from the studies that just like uh, topical tretinoin, topical isotretinoin likewise can be irritating and for a subset of people that irritation gets in the way of them actually being able to tolerate it. There are a lot of different uh, newer t forms of tretinoin out there that have been modified in the formula, the vehicles, to minimize irritation. And there have been some attempts actually made to overcome the irritation with topical isotretinoin. Some authors have actually developed nano formulations that may be less irritating. Also formulations where the isotretinoin is loaded into nanolipid carriers is also a promising delivery system. I didn't go into detail on the studies of topical isotretinoin for acne, but there are actually some good studies showing that yes, topically applied isotretinoin is likewise beneficial for acne just like topical tretinoin. Um, I know in the UK, topical isotretinoin, uh, I think y'all have a isotretinoin gel in the UK. And then I, I've heard from a lot of you all in India that you're commonly prescribed isotretinoin. So all this to say, yes, there is good research showing that it can be beneficial for acne and for photo aging. So to answer the question you guys have been asking and what you probably clicked into this video to find out, uh, how does topical isotretinoin compare to topical tretinoin? Honestly, we really don't have good comparator studies at all. Uh, everything that I've outlined here has been vehicle controlled, which is great, showing benefit, but we don't have good studies comparing tretinoin, the gold standard, to topical isotretinoin. Suffice it to say, in summary, topical isotretinoin is safe. Uh, very low to non-existent uh, detection in the plasma, so unlikely to have any systemic adverse effects. Uh, pretty well tolerated, although just like with topical tretinoin, you can develop a lot of irritation. But there's not only clinical evidence of improvement in the signs of skin aging, there's also histologic evidence from two of the studies we just went over. Uh, let me know in the comments though, are you someone who has been prescribed topical isotretinoin? How has it been going? Is it super irritating for you? Let us know in the comments how, how you have fared with topical isotretinoin. I hope this video was helpful to you all. Now I've got two other videos out there that might be of interest to you. One is a video talking about another retinoid, tazeratine, which I know a lot of you guys get prescribed uh, and comparing it to tretinoin for anti-aging. And I also have a video on adapalene, otherwise known as differin, versus tretinoin for anti-aging. And that video will be on the end slate. So if you want to watch it, click on that thumbnail and it'll take you right there. But if you guys like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.